CBS Sports, your 2018 home of March Madness. The Masters, the PGA Championship, PGA Tour, SEC Football, the NFL, and February 3rd, Super Bowl 53. Week 5 in the NFL. Out in a rainy Kansas City. Here comes Pat Mahomes. He is the AFC Player of the Month. 14 touchdowns, zero interceptions, going against the number one scoring defense in the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And there's Joe Flacco playing at a very high level this year. Age-old question, is he elite? I'll tell you what, the record versus the Browns is 17-2 and two all time. Here's Baker Mayfield, led the Browns to the most points since 2007 last week with 42, but today he faces, faces the Ravens defense that's not allowed a second-half touchdown. And there is Andy Dalton going against the Dolphins today. He's got the Bengals at 3-1, and one, and Andy Dalton throwing for almost 300 yards a game, and he's the number one quarterback in the NFL against the Blitz. All that and more coming up on the NFL Today, powered by Ram Trucks. And hello, everyone. A good Sunday to you. I'm James Brown. Let's get right to the Week 5 headlines right here on CBS. It's the veteran Joe Flacco, a.k.a. Joe Cool, versus the uber-confident rookie in Baker Mayfield, who's helping to revive a moribund franchise meeting in a compelling AFC North matchup. Coach Mike Vrabel has the Titans hitting the right notes in Music City as Tennessee is perched atop the AFC South, and his lead man, Marcus Mariota, has been clutch. And speaking of good starts, the headline of the season so far has been the spectacular play of the Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. His top-scoring, fast-breaking offense goes against a Jaguars D that allows a league-low 14 points per game. This is a marquee matchup. Cannon, touchdown, the Holmes magic. Let's go! Ball is out, fumbled. Jacksonville with the recovery. The Holmes continues to dazzle. We got to play with that swag, it's on us. Fly around, do your job, and we'll come out with the win. You get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. A defense with lots of talent. Absolute star power versus star power. This is going to be the best against the best. And here inside Studio Man. 43, Marquee is exactly what we have. <laughs> Bright lights all in my guys. Player personnel expert. That will be Phil Sims. Wow. He is. Thank yeah. you. You wouldn't wow. make any moves in here? Well, the first move, I'd wave these three. <laughs> That'd be the first thing i do. Super Bowl winning coach Bill Cower, smooth as silk Nate Burleson, and multimedia star Boomer Esiason. And folks, we have a high-octane offense against a stout D. <laughs> I'm so excited about this game, man. Come over there and steamroll you in a second. Oh! Hey, so, hey, uh, Phil, let me ask you something, Coach. Yeah. Where is the game one line of scrimmage? That's exactly right. You know, we hear so much about Mahomes and Hunt and Watkins and Hill and Kelsey, all great players for sure. But, you know, how about Fisher, Irving, Morse, Duvernay, Tardif, mm. and Schwartz, the offensive line for the Kansas City Chiefs. They played in all four of these games here at the start of the season. They're going to have their hands full. This is where this game is won and lost, the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Those guys get no credit because of the high-flying specialty mm. players that the Chiefs have, but they will be the reason and why the Chiefs win today against this Jacksonville defensive line. I love talking about the big uglies, but the specialty player, it's Pat Mahomes. And I said this week that he's the best quarterback in football. And I'll tell you why. It's similar to infomercial. They always say, but wait, there's more. We know about the record. But wait, there's more. The 14 TDs, there's more. 300 yards per game, there's more. How about when he <laughs> ad-libs and goes off script like an improv actor when the, when the play breakdowns? But there's more. He's on track to have the highest single-season passer rating. That right there, Coach, tells me that the young man is making great decisions. You know, he really is, but when you think about it, Nate, when you think about all the things that they do, the biggest thing I love, I love about him, yes, he can make all the throws, improvises as well as his yep. decision-making. Like you mentioned, he does not turn the football over. And, you know, when you look at him and you watch what the Denver Broncos did on Monday night, we've got a body of work of four games. 
Play zone. Minimize how much man-to-man -man you play. Keep everything inside and in front of you. Let them do their shifts in motion, all that window dressing, Phil. Because mm. I think if you do that, you simplify it for the defense. And we saw a little bit of that on Monday night against uh, the Denver Broncos. And it plays into the hands of how Jacksonville likes to play defense. It yeah. does. I will say Denver played a perfect game on defense. It was the ad-lib plays, all uh, skelter, whatever you want to say, that right. wanted for the Kansas City Chiefs. But we didn't see Kansas City's offense on that night because they were handcuffed. They were in Denver. Crowd noise is a big factor, and Denver has those speed rushers, so Kelsey and Hunt are back there helping out. They're mm -hmm. not getting down the field. Today, Andy Reid, hope the weather's not too bad. We're going to see all the bells and whistles. He's got an offense, and they're going to throw that football down the field, too. What well, nice mm -hmm. to see you guys really pumped up for this one. All right, and for more on this highly anticipated showdown, we go out now live to Kansas City. Welcome in Mr. Tony Romo. He'll be calling the game. So, hey, Tony, first of all, the weather out there, will it be a factor for the quarterbacks? Oh, it's going to be a factor. I, You know, watching them in warm-ups, it's definitely playing a role, and I always felt like, you know, in this kind of weather, if you haven't played in it a lot, it's going to be hard. And Mahomes hasn't played in it a lot. And talking to him this week, I, I think you could tell he was really rooting for there not to be rain. So this is a big deal, and I think it's going to help Jacksonville today. Hey, Tony, as you've heard, uh, nothing but superlatives when talking about uh, Patrick Mahomes, who's been nearly perfect, 14 touches, no picks through four games. Tell me what's been most impressive to you about the young man. Well, there's so many things you can talk about. I mean, the one thing that stands out for me is his vision, his ability to have that rare spatial awareness, that gift to, like, have instinctful feel, touch, and then, you know, he just looks people off naturally. He doesn't even know he's doing it. And that's just God-given in a lot of ways. And now you can see the stuff that's God-given, the arm strength, you know, the natural improvisation on different arm angles. But, you know, he's here to stay. He's not just a flash in the pan, has a good four- or five-week run. This, this kid's outstanding. Standing. He's one of the future bright spots at the quarterback position. Oh, impressive assessment from you. Hey, look, he's got a tough test today to check off the box against that vaunted Jags D. What should he be looking for, Tony? <laughs> I think I think today is actually going to be uh, a little bit of a tough one for him. I think you're going to see Jacksonville, who runs a very simple schematic defense, and Coach just talked about it. The way to handle Kansas City shifts, motions, all their unique stuff with people at different spots and everything is keep it simple. Allow your guys to know their gap, stand there, look at them. You're going to play man more than people think, but you're going to do it in just a very easy way with a spy defender inside. You're not trying to do unique stuff out of it. You're just letting people line up and play, and that way they can just go play ball. Jacksonville can create pressure with the front four, and they have plenty of guys in the back end. They feel confident against these Kansas City weapons, and the rain today I think is going to neutralize Kansas City's a lot more than people know. Well, we'll see how that plays out. We thank you for your insight, Tony, and looking forward to the call of the game between you, Nance, and of course, Tracy Wolfson. All right, folks, let's keep things rolling on our other early game matchups. On the NFL today, right now, a lot of talk about the Jags, of course, but how about the AFC South leading Titans? Yeah. They will battle the Bills today. They're 3-1, and one, and Marcus Mariota is a big reason why last week against Philadelphia, his running and passing really led that team to a victory. He's got two good young receivers, and Corey Davis and Taewon Taylor, and Buffalo, the strength of their team is their secondary. They've got to play very well. And my last thing is Josh Allen, just a little advice for the young quarterback. Don't wear one flag jacket, wear two. <laughs> this is the coach in a matchup between three and one squads. The Bengals play host to the injury plague Dolphins. And there you can see Ryan Tannehill coming off a tough loss in New England. He's 5-10 and ten in his last 15 road games. But on to Cincinnati, as Bill Belichick would say. When you talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, it's about Andy Dalton. He's got 11 touchdown paces on track for a career year. He's 22-1 and one when they have he throws three touchdowns or more. He will get back Joe Mixon today. He's missed the last two weeks with a knee injury. Averages 4.7 yards per carry. And they also get back the leader of their defense, Ooh, that the being Bontez Burf. Boomer's they guy. need it right now. They've struggled his first few games, but they are three and one, and they're looking to take a lead in yep. the AFC North. That's hey, my guy. Nate, in an AFC North clash, a rejuvenated Joe Flacco leading the Ravens against the upset-minded Browns. You're right about that, JB. An upset minded is right. And Blake, Baker Mayfield right there. They have 42 points last week, and I know you're thinking, well, this is high-flying scoring offense in every team. They haven't done that since Baker Mayfield was 12 years old. That's 11 years. And Joe Flacco on the other side, I'll call him G.I. Joe Flacco. He has a conflict 
powerful grip on this offense. Look at the playmakers that they're bringing around him. Crabtree, Sneed, John Brown averaging 22 and a half per reception. But still, this is the first start for that rookie at home in Cleveland. Should be a good one. Hey, boom, boom. The Broncos are looking to rebound from their tough loss to the Chiefs on Monday night. They head down the road to East Rutherford to face Gang Green. But are these the same old Jets? You know, unfortunately, right now they are, JB. They do have a future, but Todd Bowles today is going to be calling his defense as his defensive coordinator. Casey Rogers is missing this game due to a significant health issue, as he pointed out later on in the week. But I will say this, that there isn't a guy under more pressure than Todd Bowles when it comes to coaching because he's got to get more out of his rookie quarterback. Sam Darnold had a tough day on the road last week at Jacksonville. Their defense got torn up as well from Blake Portals and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Case Keenum up and down thus far for the Broncos. Had the game on his hand last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Overthrew Demarius Thomas. They mm. lost the game. A lot of question marks about his $36 million contract right now over the next two years. All right, fellas. And for more news and notes from around the league, we welcome in our NFL Today Insider. That will be Jason Locken for the weekly saga of Le'Veon Bell continues to spin. It does, JB. The Steelers have yet to hear from Bell about his plans to report by week eight, despite his recent public comments. They remain very open to trading him, sources said, with concerns about how he might be received in their locker room. The Steelers did not tell Bell they would apply the transition tag in 2019, I'm told, and were willing to pay him more than $20 million in 2018 alone, contrary to reports. Browns coordinator Todd Haley told me that Baker Mayfield's command of the offense already extends from the huddle to the sidelines. Last week, Haley was about to rip the Browns receivers after their mistakes led to a pick six at Oakland. Then the rookie intervened. Haley eagerly stepped back. He just said, coach, I got him, relax. Haley told me Mayfield gathered the receivers, coached them up, then scored on three straight drives. For a young guy in his first start, that's pretty impressive, Haley said. Look for the Browns to emphasize the run game early against the Ravens today, and things not quite as smooth between Aaron Rodgers and Coach Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. The QB has been frustrated by the scope of the offense and skeptical of some off-season staff and personnel changes. With McCarthy only signed through 2019, sources close to both men wonder how long this pairing will last, J.B. All right, Jason, boom. And how about Blake Portals? He's 4-1 and one without Leonard Fournette in the backfield with him. He's completed about 65% of his passes, and he's looking to get to 5-1 and one today because no Leonard Fournette. Coming up on the NFL Today, after last week's comeback win in Denver, the legend of Patrick Mahomes continues to grow. He throws it for six with his left hand. But this doesn't surprise anyone who's played alongside him in his journey to the top of the NFL. Despite the arrival of two top draft picks, the Jets and Giants are both off to slow starts. And New York football fans once again have a lot to complain about. With the Ravens and Bengals atop the AFC North and a Baker Mayfield-led Browns team on the cusp, is the Steelers' reign as division champs coming to an end? All that and more when the NFL Today returns on CBS, home of Super Bowl 53. The NFL Today on CBS Sports is powered by Ram Trucks. Time now for Golden Moments brought to you by McDonald's. And things are certainly looking up for these three AFC North quarterbacks all appearing on CBS Today. They will be Joe Flacco and Andy Dalton, both with their teams off to three and one starts, while the rookie, Baker Mayfield has given hope to a long-suffering Brown fan and all of them indeed. If we've learned one thing from the history of the AFC North, it's going to be a fight to the finish. And Pittsburgh will lose this one to fall to one, two, and one. Stick a fork in them. They're done. And for another view on the AFC North, we welcome in our colleague Jim Rome, who took his Air Force Rome 1 back out west and east. 
His radio show, The Jim Rome Show, simulcast weekdays at noon Eastern on CBS Sports Network. His view on this division battle shaking out. JB, good morning. You want drama, I give to you the AFC North. Starting with the Steelers, easy to blame their awful start on the absence of Le'Veon Bell, but Bell can't tackle or cover anyone, and the guys who are supposed to be doing it are not doing it. And if they don't start today against Atlanta, it will not matter when or if Bell does come back. Then you have the Ravens, a throwback crew, flying around, lighting people up, and playing the kind of defense that the league used to put a premium on. And even then, they're still looking Looking up at the Bengals. And while Tyler Eifert's injury was horrific, the Bengals have weapons across the board and they look every bit a legitimate playoff contender. But let's not get this twisted. This division belongs to the Browns. Shoot, the entire league belongs to the Browns. Yeah, I said it. I know they're 1 2 and 1, but they're two kicks and a brutal replay away from 4 0, and they are must see TV. Move over, Jerry Jones. The Cleveland Browns are America's team, coach. Oh, oh man. man. The coach. What, there's something in that water in L.A. <laughs> I don't it's know. An interesting take for sure. But, Phil, when you talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, they're off to a great start. And obviously, it starts with the red rifle. Yeah, it does. Andy Dalton's having a terrific year so far. And they do a lot of things on offense. They move around. And why they do all these things? To protect their offensive line, they're worried about it. So when you want to protect your offensive line, screens are great. What's the screen here to Giovanni, Giovanni Bernard? Look at the offensive lineman out in front. They're very good at this. They'll do it three or four or five times every single game. How about this? I love it when you give defenses different looks. Switch routes wow. and look at John Ross inside. His speed, the safety, Andy Dalton doesn't even look it off, but his speed, he outruns the defense and catches this for a touchdown, along with A.J. Green is great. Now, A.J. Green lining up all over the field, in the slot, Andy Dalton on fire. Nothing like a back shoulder throw to a 6'5 receiver playing the slot, throwing it outside. So, since these offense is rolling, and I know you're probably going to talk defense, Baltimore defense. What do you think about it? Oh, no, I'm talking Baltimore offense, Phil. You're talking about an offense will complement oh. the defense. You're talking about Joe Flacco, who is back healthy this year with Alex Collins. And it all starts with them up front with that running game and that offensive line because it sets up everything else they want to do offensively. And Alex Collins has been a great asset to them. Picked him up last year. And what does that do there? You know, they picked up Michael Crabtree. They picked up Willie Sneed. But they picked up one of the fastest guys the National Football League. That's John Brown. He can stretch the field and Joe Flacco throws one of the best deep balls in the National Football League. Just run underneath it, John Brown. And then when you add to that, add a tight end. They're going to get back Hayden Hurst for number one pick today. Here's Max Williams. Pinpoint target. Cover two. Boom, put it right in there, right there. Joe Flacco is on fire right now with this offense. And oh, yeah, there's Lamar Jackson. Oh. How about a little Wildcat? So something else for the defense to have to prepare for. This offense is multifaceted. It gives you a lot of different looks. And you know the other things they have? One of the best kickers in the National Football League, Justin Tucker. When they get across the 50, it opens up their offense. That's why this is one of the most complete teams in the National Football League, not just the AFC North. Holy Christ. I mean, hey, you're talking about offense. It's like vinegar coming out of your mouth. <laughs> hey, Nate, Boomer, elaborate. Who is the best team in the AFC North? I can't believe Coach is that excited talking about the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> uh, you know, in preseason, Nate, I picked the Ravens to win this division. I right. also picked the Bengals. To be the wild card, I yeah. didn't know really uh, that much about the uh, the Steeler defense. We've seen it, and I'm not going with a rookie quarterback. I think Coach just pointed out all the things. Yeah. Big offensive line, big downfield thrower, yep. spent a lot of money on wide receivers, yep. best kicker in football. That's and right. on top of all of that, they are loaded in the secondary, yeah. and they actually are one of the few teams that actually play defense. Yeah, and Jim, Rome mentioned the, the must-see TV, and the Browns and the Steelers are like soap operas. The Browns are young and the restless, of course, with a young quarterback. And then, of course, as the world turns, we don't know what's going on in Pittsburgh, but the Bengals, I've been scorned before, so I'm not all the way sold. That's why I'm going with the Ravens as well. They've been trying to mimic that 2,000 defense, building it in free agency, also in the draft and offensively. This is the best we've seen Joe Flacco play in a long time, which is why he's playing at such a high level, those type of playmakers. But the Bengals, though, this is that team that gets you excited because Andy Dalton plays at a high level. They got the speed. A.J. Green is healthy, and then they got Mixon, the running game there. So we'll see what happens. Of course, Burfick being back is going to add a different element to this squad. But I could, I, you look at this, though, top five defense, top five offense. The teams that did that last year, Jags, yes. Eagles, Pats, they all won their division.
how about that? And we got Baker Mayfield right there. The Browns are so good, and they're so close to being good. I can taste it. I'm looking forward to this young man going out, making his first start at home, trying to give the Baltimore Ravens all they can handle. The NFL Today is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. FedEx. Possibilities. What we deliver by delivering. And by Ram Trucks. This past week, the Miami Dolphins visited Alex's place at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center to distribute gifts and to brighten the spirits of young cancer patients. The children and their families had a chance to interact with the team, get autographs, and take photos. And the Dolphins are certainly doing their part in the fight against cancer. And throughout the month of October, the NFL and the American Cancer Society are continuing their longtime partnership on crucial catch to help the nation make that the nation play offense against all types of cancer. Visit NFL.com slash crucial catch to learn more and to complete the defender for personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk. And we take a look there at Coach Todd Bowles and his rookie quarterback Sam Darnold getting the Jets season off to a rousing start. But since then, it has been anything but smooth sailing for Bowles and company. And that takes us inside the pregame HQ delivered by Domino's. So the Jets are not the only New York team struggling right now. Fans' frustrations are mounting for Big Blue as well. And for more on that, Jim Rome joins us once again. Jim? Well, JB, let me be real about the state of New York football. It's real sorry. I get the Saquon Barkley as a monster. I just don't get the Giants burning the second pick on the draft on him. Did they really think that having Barkley and Odell Beckham back would fix Eli Manning? And that offensive line is not any better either. Big Blue, he's gone 37 straight games without cracking 30 points. And the highlight of their season so far has been the benching of Eric Flowers. And Jets fans, I would not start gloating too much either. Yes, you got your quarterback of the future, and you look great with 48 points in week one, but you've scored 41 points since then. And the defense just got humiliated last week. Some new faces, same awful results. I'm from Los Angeles, and we went two decades without football, but even that may not be as bad as what I'm seeing from the Giants and the Jets. And the Tennessee Titans sit atop the AFC South after coming back on the defending world champs and schooling the Super Bowl caliber Jags again. How? Because coach Mike Vrabel's team plays exactly the same way that linebacker Mike Vrabel did as a player with extreme toughness. And if you enjoy seeing people smash each other in the face, this is the crew for you. Marcus Mariota told me he loves Vrabel, and even more so after going all in and playing for the win against Philadelphia last week. Remember all that noise about Mariota? I don't. And after seeing him banged up and clutch up against some of the best in the league, it should never come back. Before this season, everybody handed the Jags the AFC South, but if they want it, they're going to have to rip it from the Titans. And less than two weeks ago, everybody was throwing dirt on the Pats again, and I'll admit it, I was reaching for my shovel until they ripped it right out of my hand on Thursday night against the Colts. If Julian Edelman had any rust to knock off, it came off in a hurry. And the reason Josh Gordon gets chance after chance is because he does things like this. And now we know why Bill Belichick burned a first rounder on running back Sony Michelle, straight baller. And we already knew what James White could do. And all that just means that Gronk does not have to worry about getting mugged all day every Sunday. In other words, nothing new, same as it ever was. And when it comes to the AFC, JB, it is still the Patriots and everybody else. The wordsmith, oh, right. Mr. Jim yeah. Rome. As always, <laughs> thanks for your keen insight. You know what? As Jim previously mentioned, Julian Edelman is back. But he's just one of a number of players returning from suspension this week. So the question is, who will have the greatest impact on their team going forward? Well, for me, it's Vontez Perfect. He's back from his annual suspension. Let's hope he doesn't get suspended <laughs> again before the year yeah. is over. And the reason he's important, the Bengals have given up an average of 419 yards per game, plus 28 points. Mm. He's a terrific run defender, and as we all know, he brings an edge to the defense. Yeah, and how about Jimmy Smith, though, with the Baltimore Ravens? Six lowest pass rating against him last year. In that same season, as you can see, three interceptions. He's joined a defense that has led the NFL in interceptions 
interceptions the last two seasons. So expect PBUs, pass breakups, and INTs. Well, those are great choices, but the one to pick is Mark Ingram coming back to the New Orleans Saints. He's a power runner. He ran for over 1,000 yards last year, nearly five yards per carry. And what's important about this, he can come and give Alvin Kamara some rest because they are a running football team and they need them both. We mm. saw the biggest impact, that's Julian Edelman. He has been a security blanket of uh, Tom Brady for many, many years. That offense revolves around the slot defender making first downs. It's opened it up for Josh Gordon and James White and Sonny McKell. That guy right there is the most important element of that offense for Tom Brady, not being Julian Edelman. All right, fellas, we'll keep the conversation going here, but with kickoff just about a half hour away, time now to set the scene at your game as we take you out first on the field for the latest news and updates on your matchup. Yeah, that was coming up, mate. And later, you'll see Derek Carr lead the Raiders into L.A. to rekindle their rivalry with Phillip Rivers and, as Nate would say, the Chargers in an AFC West matchup. That comes your way at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on CBS. <laughs> All right, Boomer and Nate yes. on the radar. You know, here's the thing. The Chargers actually brought in music to their practice this week, and that's usually what you do when you play on the road. This game uh -huh. is at the StubHub Center. It's right. home of the L.A. Chargers. Guess what? They're going to be invaded by Raider fans, so they are dealing with that. The other thing that I would worry about if I am the Raiders is your fourth quarter performance. They've given up over 20 points in the second half in each of their games, and today they go against Phillip Rivers. He'll be looking to do that, but it's going to be very hard for the Chargers to do that at home and on the road at the same time. I know. How about that? It's kind of a mind twist a little yes. bit. The Oakland Raiders, though, coming off that dub, you're trying to figure out who is this team? Are they the team that's fake bad, or all of a sudden are they fake good? They have led in every fourth quarter this year, which kind of makes you seem that they have control of the games. For this game, it comes down to vehicle shopping. What do I mean? It's how does the car handle the road? And Derek Carr on the road, 10 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, or 14 turnovers, that is. He needs to take care of the rock if they want to win this. And for the LA Chargers, they're 2-2, two and, two, and their two losses have gone to Jacksonville and Kansas City, both of whom have not lost a game yet. And you talk about an offense that's built around Phillip Rivers. He's got 11 touchdowns, two interceptions, 68% completion percentage already in the first four weeks. And you know what? I love the one-two combination he has in the backfield. Melvin Gordon, five touchdowns already. And Austin Eckler and Keenan uh, Allen as a receiver. Their defense, though, they get an uh, uh, added body to uh, this. It week, needs right? help, and they got Corey Legit coming back in there. That's big. He could help stop the run, push the pocket. But maybe most of all, did you see Marshawn Lynch run last Ooh. week? Mm. They need some mm. help stopping that big truck. <laughs> <laughs> right about that. And there's Jalen Ramsey right there, a little trash talk between him and Tyreek Hill. He is the Muhammad Ali of cornerbacks. Fault like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Tyreek Hill can't score if he goes against me. Vince Lombardi. Trophy. Everybody that's in professional football wants this trophy. Atta B, Leonard, you're a champ! Nice going, Leonard. Nice going, baby. Nice going, baby. Baseball has a series. Football has a one game to determine who is the best. The Chiefs are the champions of pro football. Well, you got bragging rights for the rest of your life. And, of course, we will be in Atlanta for Super Bowl 53 right here on CBS. And who could forget the great Lynn Dawson in Super Bowl number four? Well, from one great chief to another great one in the making, after last week's impressive comeback win in Denver, Patrick Mahomes was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Month. And while he's early in the season with his dominance, he is widening eyes across the NFL. And it's not surprising to those who knew him back in the day. 23-20 Broncos, 3.20 to go in the game. This crowd crazy, making it tough on Patrick Mahomes. Broncos show blitz, a sellout blitz. Mahomes trying to keep it a drive. He's looking to the left side. He throws it left-handed to Tyree Kill, and Hill makes the catch, a first down. That is simply amazing. That's what he does. He did it in high school, he did it now. That was left-handed falling down. Shotgun snap. It's a handoff, and it goes over the left tackle. Hunt is into the end zone for a Kansas City touchdown. We've been watching Pat from high school all the way through to college, and we just support him. We want him to just keep on putting the White House on the map. White House, Texas.
My first uh, recollection, I guess, of uh, Patrick uh, was running the summer football camp. Patrick would have been in fifth grade, sixth grade. As he kind of came up through the program, I was his offensive coordinator and then uh, ultimately the head football coach for him. We've known each other since about the third and fourth grade. He could always throw, and that's what just stood out from the rest of the kids is he just had natural arm strength. I mean, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, you're like, man, this, this kid's got something special. Our O-line coach who recruited East Texas brought me the film. Didn't always look pretty um, or like you know, it was probably drawn up, but he made plays and huge plays. And I think one of his highlight tapes had four legitimate Hail Marys on it. I think it was in OTAs a year ago. He was out on the field just playing with the ball, and he just launches one to somebody who's on, like, the complete opposite end of the field. And I think everyone just stopped for a second and just turned and looked. I think that's the moment that we realized, okay, this guy does have some freakish arm talent. I played center at White House. Patrick Mahomes' highlight reel is based off of my, like, fail reel. When the offensive line protection broke down, I had all the faith in the world knowing that Patrick's going to get out there and do something better than I did. Early on, I heard a whole lot of, what is he doing? What in the world is he doing? Oh, touchdown. No, 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 yes. And then high five him and then say, do it again. You have a cat like that, you don't try to put the reins on him too much. You let him do his thing. Something that we've noticed throughout this whole time of playing with him is the play's never dead. Mahomes in the pocket, peeling away. Peels back to his right, trying to keep the play alive. Fires it late. It's caught in the back of the end zone. Touchdown! Conley with the catch, but Patrick Mahomes with Mahomes. Not quite sure how I got there, but it did. I think we were just as impressed as everybody else. We were down uh, right before the half. I mean, time is running out. Patrick rolls to his left. He turns back around, rolls back to his right. Then he got to set his feet. When he gets to set his feet, it's on. Coverages, they, would, they wouldn't expect him to be able to throw it that far, and a lot of guys would come off thinking the, the play was over, and then next thing you know, ball's going over their head for a touchdown. We were playing Louisiana Tech, and, and he rolls out to his left, and he's kind of just showing off, so he doesn't set his feet, and he kind of just clips it, running full speed to his left. Perfect throw in the corner, ends up about 60 yards. The ball that he threw to Tyreek in the preseason versus the Falcons, I think everyone thought that play was over. I think even Tyreek thought that that play was over. That's not a ball that you tell a quarterback to throw, and he threw it, and he got it there. And I think we were all a little bit surprised, a little bit dumbfounded. But uh, that, was, that was an impressive thing to see firsthand. We've been so spoiled, you know, with, with the things that we've seen. I'm excited for everyone else that now gets to see what White House Texas has been seeing from Patrick Mahomes. I haven't seen the drastic no-look pass. That I'm sure that's coming where he's looking the complete opposite way and throws it to a receiver that way. That's that's one of his specialties, so that'll be broken out soon, I'm sure. I've seen him throw it uh, behind his back. I've seen him throw it uh, at a low arm angle. I'm not exactly excited to see him do that in a game. I'm really hoping he doesn't have to do that in a game, but who knows? There's, there's nothing I wouldn't put past him. Hey, make no mistake about it, a great physical talent, requisite quarterback skills, but yep. Boomer, there's more to this package. Well, as you can see, his coaches love him, his teammates love him, he is a true leader. He also knows the offense. Just because he does all those spectacular plays doesn't mean he can't stand in the a pocket and read defenses. We've already seen that this year. He's one on the road at the, at the Chargers, and he's one on the road at Denver. Two hard places to play, and today another test for this young phenom who really is my radio partner, Greg Giannotti, put it. He is the Steph Curry of of the NFL. Well, you know what I find interesting? Last year, Alex Smith, the Kansas City Chiefs, mm -hmm. he has one of his best years of his career. They go to the playoffs and they trade him. And you don't hear a peep out of any player from the Kansas City Chiefs or personnel people. And here's why. Because all last year, they're at practice and they're seeing Mahomes make plays like this. If we see him in the game, what do you think he's doing in practice every single day? So you take his skill. Now, I know he's got a lot of good players around him, JB, and, and tight end with Kelsey Hunt. Uh, Tyree Kill, but when you have a guy with his skill, he brings out the greatness of the other players around him. And, you know, I know the rain could be a factor today out there in Kansas City, but if he's got a chance, he's going to make some big plays. So when he has one bad game, let's not go the other way. With no, we him. won't. It better not be today, though. All right, good point. Not on yes. CBS, right? Hey, and in just about 20 minutes from now, all eyes will be on Big Showdown in Kansas City where the top-ranked Saxonville defense will go up against the Chiefs' top-ranked offense. That is coming up in 1 Eastern right here on CBS. Can I sack, Phil? 
And we're counting down to kick off with some players to watch today. There's Geno Atkins of the Cincinnati Bengals. He gets Vontez perfect back. And to say you're second to Aaron Donald and since 2014 puts you in some elite company. How about Bradley Chubb? There he is, uh, drafted in the first round, fifth overall. The Denver Broncos are happy that he fell to them. One and a half sacks, four QB hits, one tackle, four loss, ten tackles, 208 plays, the most in their front seven. How about Nick Chubb? What did he do last week against Oakland? Two long touchdown runs. Him along with Carlos Hyde. What a combo the Cleveland Browns have in the backfield. And there's Corey Davis. I remember interviewing him on the red carpet during the draft. I said, man, you look good. He said, it looks like money. And so was that catch <laughs> last week. The first career touchdown came in overtime, and it was a game winner. Hey, I had to ask Bill Cower about this line here. If you like offense, then you have to be thrilled with what you've seen so far. Scoring folks on a historic pace through the first four weeks of the season, setting league records for points scored and touchdowns with 228 out of the 344 scores wow. coming through the air field. Well, you know what? Uh, I took a survey. It's not official, of course, <laughs> but the fans, they love it. And mm -hmm. case in point, the Giants locker room guy is guarding the New Orleans Saints last week. Now, they all know he's a Giant fan. He's got the gear on. When the game is over, he's high-fiving the New Orleans players as they come in. And somebody says, why are you happy when we won? He goes, because I had Alvin Kamara, Kamara in, in fantasy football. So <laughs> the fans love it. Fantasy football, everything. Uh, it's working well. Well, I think the culture of the NFL has changed. I think you said last week, boom, it's the new NFL. And why? Uh, I'll just say, it's, it's the helmet rule. For, D, for wide receivers, they can run uninhibited across the middle. For Talk DBs, about it. it's hard. It, it's hard. You, for defensive linemen rushing mm. the quarterback, the emphasis on protecting the quarterback. For defense right now, you're hesitant at times. You can't play free, and so there's a lot of freedom. And, yeah, the fans love it. It's a very big challenge to play defense today. Yeah, I'll just speak for the wide receivers. You're coming off the line of scrimmage when I came in. It was a hand fight. And then anytime you roamed across the middle of the field, you are getting your block knocked off. I don't know how many times I've seen my feet while I was sitting there on, back on the ground. I'm like, I shouldn't be looking at my shoes from this view but nowadays wide receivers can run routes without even getting hit that goes along with well the quarterback I think it's the free. second chance penalties that are happening in our game whether it be roughing the passer defensive holding defensive illegal contact plays like that that give the offense a chance to stay on the field with a new first down those so boomer you're on my and bill you know what I love the offensive explosion but I still feel for the defenders because they always have to play catch up with the way things are being and the defenders right would now. like to feel the offensive players a lot harder than they are <laughs> <laughs> hey folks it's time now for the NFL Today picks presented by FedEx. Bill Cowher said a lot in that, by the way. Uh, Upset specials for week five. All right, I'm taking the Arizona Cardinals over the San Francisco 49ers. Josh Rosen brought some life to the team last week. I think it's going to work this week. Who cares about that game? I'm going to take the Giants right now. <laughs> the Giants are going to win this football game because, you know what, a lot of talk here in, uh, in New York, I like the Giants uh, with a big win tonight. Okay, before the Baltimore Ravens get all in their feelings, this is purely on unpredictability of the NFL. I'm going with the Browns over the Baltimore Ravens. They're at home. Uh, the rookie's making his first start at home. Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, going to make some plays. How about them Cowboys? Oh, hey, the Battle of the Texans over the Texans. I'm not so sure the Texans are all the way back, and I do think that the Cowboys are starting to feel a little bit better about themselves. I'll go with the Cowboys. Hey, let right. me send out a big hallelujah, by the way, to Dave Gettleman, general manager of the Giants, right. cancer-free as a result of his treatments this past week. God bless you, Dave Gettleman. All right, folks, a reminder, simply go to NFL.com slash FedEx, cast your vote for the FedEx Air and Ground NFL Players of the Week, and don't forget to follow along and see all of our weekly picks at cbsports.com slash FedEx. Kickoff, just a few hey, minutes away. Uh, we'll Bob get you out to your game next. That was Bob Wiley. The NFL Today on CBS Sports is powered by Ram Trucks. Hey, folks, a reminder later, you'll see Derek Carr lead the Raiders into L.A. to rekindle their rivalry with Phillip Rivers and the Chargers in an AFC West matchup. That comes your way for Eastern, one Pacific right here on CBS. All right, folks, back by popular demand. At least that's what Drew Kaliski says. It's time, which means it was by his partner, Max, who said, Max, who said that. It's time for another round of Believe or Make Believe. I'll make a statement, and the guys will answer. So we begin with Coach Cower. Okay. The Titans will win 10 games. Is that a believe or make believe? I believe because I believe in the right way they're doing it. They're playing defense. They're running the football. Uh, I think Mike Vrabel's got them down there. They're 3-1 and one right now. 
Um, and I, I just believe, and I love the way they're doing it. It's kind of old-school football. It's play action, run the football, and it's play good defense. I think that is sustainable over the course of a season. And and nothing, would, nothing would please me more than to disagree with Coach, but I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, you don't have to in this segment. I did, though. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, hey, Nate, let's go with you. What's up? Derwin James will win NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. Ooh. Is that believe or make believe? Well, you look at the way he's flying around and the playmaking ability. I remember talking to him before the draft, and he said, I am the most versatile guy at the same position. The fact that he can get to quarterbacks, create sacks, and then we're watching the PBUs, the athletic ability of this young man, I do believe in this guy, and he's going to continue to make plays. I don't know. Denzel Ward's having a pretty good He's year. He's good year. Yeah. Bradley Chubb's having a pretty good year. Yeah. A couple linebackers. They, yeah. I like what having, you said. You're Darius right. Leonard's good attorney. Good good year. Versatility. Reasons. Very good. Unbelievable. Steel. Yeah. Well, Harshawn Lynch. You called him a truck. Will rush for more than 1,000 yards this season. Is that believe or make believe? He currently has 300 yards rushing so far. Yes, he does. Uh, that is a truth. Truth, mm. truth. He is going to make it. You know, people think of John Gruden, it's all about passing the football. He, John Gruden, at his heart and core, always is a coach. He never gives up on the running game. And Marshawn Lynch last week, I don't know what got into him. Somebody must have said something before the game because he was running over people and he looked like he did like four or five years ago when he was up in Seattle. Mm. What, what game does he get 1,000 yards? What game? Yeah, like, what, by what? as long as he gets it before the year's up, that's the question. No, Don't well, be thinking up. <laughs> I know the question. I was gonna, well, let me I'm think. Going, let uh, me think, because you know I know. Well, I'm probably week 13. <laughs> okay. Okay. Phil okay. Stradamus. Hey, yeah. Man, you are Mate, so I'm going to ask you, but Bill is going to chime off of you. The Chicago Bears uh, will win the NFC North. Believe oh, or make believe. You I do believe. Anytime I say something against the Packers, people in Green Bay think it's blasphemous, but I feel like there's some things that they have to correct, especially on the offense side of the ball. But this offense right here, for the first time, I saw shades of Kansas City. What Matt, Matt Nagy was trying to do, the guys that he brought in, it got me excited because the versatility within this offense is starting to show itself. And then on the defense side of the ball, Khalil Mack is not just the best player on this team. He could be the best player in the NFL. He's playing that good. I yeah. won't disagree with that, but, you know, I'm not taking anything they did on the offensive side last week and going, wow, who'd they play? Oh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How's that defense? But we saw the creativity for I the saw first it. Okay. time. Go ahead, go, 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 It's funny. You, you pointed out the Bengals and how great they were. And who did they play last week? They played the Atlanta Falcons. They may be worse Ooh, than the Buccaneers. So, so, who do you so like? don't kill him. That wasn't the question. Oh, who do you about like, him. Boomer? I'm going with Aaron Rodgers, man. I'm I agree with Bo Boomer. I agree with Boomer. I think Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Yes. Don't forget about them. What happened to Kirk Cousins getting paid all that money and taking them to the Super Bowl? Well, I never said that. I'm just saying that's what they paid him for. I thought they... Oh, it said, listen, he can't stop him. He's not tackling people. They can't stop anybody in the passing He's game. He's playing good. He's and he has fine. just average And you know what? Protection. You answer mad every time we get to the segment. Got, that's my point. You're no, mad. Not. Every the time we get, is, it. we get along real well up here. Yes. Is he angry? He gets what? Yeah, yeah, he's he's he just gets salty. Just stop this. Just, I just, I'm sure we get boomer. the game time. Boomer. Oh, oh, here he goes. Just deal with the facts. Hey, Boomer. A team will set the record for the highest scoring season in NFL history. The 2013 Broncos that would be have it at 606 points. Right, right they do. I, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. I still think there's a lot of good defensive teams, and I think when the weather changes, uh, it, that you know that was a Peyton Manning special year for the Broncos. I mean, that was once in a lifetime thing. I don't think it's going to happen this you year. You know, I'll just piggyback off that because we talked about it earlier why is scoring up. It's a it, it's it's one block. Let's give let's let this thing play out. Mm. Let the Rams let's let it marinate. The Rams and the Chiefs. No, oh, hold on. Horrible. Angry Bird will get the last word. Oh, Go no, ahead, Nate. The Rams and the Chiefs. Yeah. They're going to break the record. What are you talking yeah, about? They here? are. Hey, hey, coach, we're week to week here. We're not worried about the year. <laughs> see, I get you. We're far. Look at you. We'll you're, see you back in four. He's been talking right here on CBS. So mad.